The Pestilence by Tyler Fritch Exterior, Milan Streets Afternoon Rain hails from the sky. Gray clouds blanket the city of Milan. Even darker ones hang in the distance. Title card. Milano, Italia, 1348 CE. The stone architecture of Milan denotes prosperity, despite the vacant streets it grows from. Hooded figures dash from shelter to shelter, avoiding the downpour. A lone, cloaked man drags a heavy wooden cart with a large sheep draped over it. A black, bloody, boiled arm hangs limply from the edge of the cart as it dips and bumps through the mud and small rocks below. A bell rings. Interior, monastery. Matthias' room. Matthias, late twenties, early thirties, reads alone in his windowless, candlelit quarters. He is a brother to the church, training for priesthood. He studies the scripture, often repeating lines back to himself. The bell continues to ring, and Matthias fights the call for one more page. Brother Matthias? Father Alberto, late sixties, knocks on the door. He is Matthias' closest friend in the monastery, personally responsible for his preparation to be ordained. Yes, Father, coming. Matthias never lets his eyes from the text, racing to the last paragraph. Just as he finishes, Father Alberto opens the door. The large old man stands at the doorway in his priestly robes. He'd take too much space if he entered. He pats his belly. The sooner we pray, the sooner we eat, my boy. They share a smile as Matthias marks the place in his book and sets it aside. Interior, Monastery Hall. Father Alberto leads to the chapel. Matthias peers through small windows to the outside along the way. I hope this rain will clear the air. Hush now, we're late. Father Alberto is at the door to the chapel, his hand on the handle. Quietly pushes the door open, and Matthias slips through before him. Interior, chapel. Monks, priests, and brothers quietly pray to the cross. Matthias noticed several vacant spaces, more than usual. He and Father Alberto find places and begin prayer. Bait two, interior monastery, dining hall. Matthias and Father Alberto dine at long tables with many of the clergy from before. There are hushed conversations here and there, but the hall eats in silence overall. The rain outside has subsided to a drizzle. There is relative silence for a moment. Please, don't take him! A woman screams outside. Matthias is the only one to take note. Please, let me bury him! I cannot let him burn! Her pleas receive no reply, beyond or within the monastery. The cries continue until they fade away into the distance. I haven't seen Brother Fernando and Father Luca yet. Should they not have returned a couple of days ago? There's still snow in the mountains. I'm sure that's delaying them. Remember, we're waiting for more horses. They only had our mule. A mild stench seeps through the window. A few of the clergy cough into their robes. Matthias looks outside. Can't make out much save for the glow of pyres and their towers of smoke. I forgot about the horses. Fade to. Interior monastery. Matthias' room. Night. Father Alberto sits on Matthias' bed as the younger brother hovers over him. Matthias holds Alberto's hand in one and his rosary beads in the other. May the Lord, in his love and mercy, help you with the grace of the Holy Spirit. He releases his hand from Alberto's and stands upright. What do you think? Very good. Very assuring. Your grip may be a bit tight, but your eyes were perfect. Just remember... You're not the healer here. It is the Lord. Matthias nods and seats himself next to Alberto. Brother Enzo said he doesn't plan to touch any of the sick when he's anointing them. If it is the plague, perhaps it's best not to touch where they are infected. Never mind, Brother Enzo. He's not one for people. Monkhood suits him. But you are meant to lead, Matthias, to shepherd your own flock. Yes, Father. Can I tell you something? Of course. This plague is frightening me. I have never felt more ready for priesthood, but the world is changing in these last few months. I may be given a parish if losses continue in the South. Do you fear getting sick? Yes. I suppose as much as any man. 
I'm more frightened of being a part of the situation I feel helpless in, yet responsible. I see God's miracles every day, and still I feel the devil's work is spreading. It's uncontainable. Take a breath, Matthias. Troublesome thoughts fester in any idle man. I think the monks are the only ones suited for this quarantine. It's true there are parishes in need, but it will take time for the bishop to sort through it all. Matthias is still haunted by his thoughts. Alberto puts a hand on Matthias's shoulder. Do not be mistaken. This pestilence is the devil's work. God wants us to survive and prosper, but we must stay strong and rely on him. The devil paints these lands with his evil in a broad stroke, but the Lord is righteous and perfect. He paints his miracles with a fine brush, deliberate and detailed. He gestures playfully, as if he's painting Matthias. The young brother smiles and gently waves Alberto's hand away. Make sure you do the painting when you're a priest. Children love it. There's a knock at the door. Come in. Brother Matteo, late teens, twenties, enters. His youthful appearance and shy demeanor make it clear he's new to the monastery. 